I want to share what I saw at the Legion of Honor Museum in San Francisco, their show, The Last Supper in Pompeii, From Table to the Grave, and give the highlights so you can enjoy the artwork if you can't go to the show yourself. If you're unfamiliar with the history, Pompeii is a city that was devastatingly destroyed by Mount Vesuvius when it erupted. The city got covered with hot ash, and so the people and the animals all died in a very devastating way. At the same time, it's an interesting freeze of history since it was covered in hot ash. A lot of the artwork and even the people were amazingly preserved. So Last Supper in Pompeii from Table to the Grave is looking at the food and drinks and all the culture and artwork that's around that. Walking in, you're greeted with the Roman god Bacchus. He is the god of wine and festivities. He is definitely one of my favorite gods portrayed in artwork. You can get some really interesting representations of him. Now he's pretty tame as he's portrayed in the sculpture, though he is feeding a jaguar, which is pretty cool. Fun fact, you know that this sculpture is Roman because if you look at his legs, one of his legs has a support system on it. The Romans, great sculptors, but they hadn't quite mastered the balance of a standing figure without using a support system on the leg. So a lot of times they hide that support on the leg, making it look like a tree trunk or fabric or a staff or something like that. Contrasting, you know it's a Greek sculpture if they don't have that support system because the Greeks, amazing sculptors, and they had really mastered how to balance that figure without a support system on the leg. But what really draws me into the show is what is behind Bacchus, and it's these three frescoes. They were in the dining area of some Romans' home in Pompeii. I find them really beautiful, really colorful. They're filled with so much life. There's birds and all of these flowers and plants. So much activity is in them, but my favorite part is the, the middle fresco, and at the bottom it has this really grumpy looking bird, which I find very delightful. Fun fact with frescoes, so frescoes are wall paintings. They're paintings that are painted on the wall. So how you do those is you put plaster on the wall and you paint into the plaster and you only have the time limit until the plaster dries to make the painting because once the plaster dries, you're done. You can't make layers or anything like that. So when you're working on them, you take them in pieces. So you'll put plaster down for an area that you think you can finish in the given timeline of when the plaster dries. And when that's done, then you'll work on another section. So when I'm looking at frescoes, I always find it fun to try and see the different sections that it took the artist to make the whole entire fresco. They had quite a few number of frescoes in the show. They had smaller ones like this rooster painting. The description for this said that the Romans liked to paint animals that they were gonna eat, and they would paint that animal eating the food that it's gonna be cooked in. So you can see the rooster eating pomegranates, and I think there's pears and a fig back there. So once you realize that, that makes the painting just seem super dark, but also interesting. Now onto the mosaics. They had a few number of mosaics in the show, which were really interesting to look at. This one, definitely my favorite. The tiles of this mosaic are incredibly small, but I think what makes this piece really interesting is not the fact that it must have taken the artist so long to put thousands of tiles to make this image, but actually the design of the image. I really like how you have the center octopus that's fighting a crawdad and it's very fluid and a lot of movement there. And then that's contrasted with the other big element in it, which I feel like is the fish at the bottom, which how that fish is portrayed is really blunt and bulky and just solid. And I like that contrast of something that's bulky, solid to something that's really fluid and you can really feel the movement in it. And those two elements I see repeated then all over the mosaic which you have some fish where their design is more fluid and you see the curves in them, and then other smaller ones where you get that just solid blocky image of a fish. The show also has a lot of cookware, dinnerware, like pots and pans. The one that I liked the best was this pot, and what makes it so interesting and beautiful is all the rock fragments that are on the top part of the pot. And reading the description, you find out that those rock fragments are actually from the volcanic eruption that are stuck to the pot now. And so it's 
beautiful, but then you think about all the devastation and how it happened where those pieces of rock got stuck there and you just get this really odd feeling. And that odd feeling of having really beautiful pieces and then seeing other things where you're just reminded of the devastation of Pompeii keeps coming back to me as I go through the show and as you're enjoying the artwork. You have those amazing frescoes, but then in the show they also have the remains of a dog that's curled up and a pig. And with how those animals have positioned themselves, it's obvious that they, they suffered with the hot ash that had fallen on them and that's how they died. And even more so, the last gallery in the show, they have the remains of a woman. It's a resin cast of her remains and she is in a display case. And beside her in another display case is her jewelry. And you can see that the Legion of Honor Museum, they're trying to give her a lot of dignity. There's nothing else in that last gallery except for her and her jewelry. It's a very dark, dim room. And, and they have a sign saying that obviously they she didn't have a funeral. So in this way, it's kind of like a funeral where people can connect to her and the people of Pompeii and how they died. But I honestly dis agree with that. I feel like there has to be another way for the people that are going to this show to connect to the people of Pompeii without displaying this woman because she didn't really have the option to say that she wanted to be displayed or her family members didn't have a say that knew her. And of course that would have been impossible for what happened in Pompeii. But I feel like there's just got to be a different way to achieve that goal of connecting with the people of Pompeii. And so that's why also I didn't take any photos or video of this last room. And I guess why I'm saying all this is because if I would have known, I would have skipped that last gallery. And so now if anyone shares that same opinion with me, now they know so they can choose to skip that last gallery if they want to or not.